you know, you can actually obtain your first cryptocurrency by earning it. So you don't have to have starting cash and you don't have to go through an exchange. The more decentralized peer to peer transaction, we can just do together um, utilizing a wallet. And, uh, and so then you could get your first cryptocurrency by earning it. So you don't even have to have starting capital. Hai, ini Tanya, host dari podcast Janda Bercanda, channel yang didedikasikan untuk kebaikan mental health, single parenting, female partnership, dan personal development para janda. Ngelanjutin pembicaraan terakhir tentang cryptocurrency, hari ini kita bahas cara untuk memiliki kripto di bagian kedua wawancara dengan tamu kita, Melden Joy dari Investera. Mereka akan jelasin lebih dalam bagaimana caranya punya kripto. Juga, strategi asset allocation cryptocurrency sebagai bagian dari portfolio investment. Buat yang belum sempat dengerin part 1 dan basics of cryptocurrency, bisa didengerin di podcast Janda Bercanda. Sebelum masuk ke wawancaranya, tolong buat yang belum subscribe channel YouTube-nya Janda Bercanda, di follow, like, dan hit the notification bell supaya nggak ketinggalan episode-episode terbaru. Dan kalau ada saran atau masukan, tolong di komen atau DM ya. Okay, without further ado, I present to you the ladies of Investera, Mel and Joy. For the purposes of this um, episode, I have taken Investera's Bitcoin for Beginners, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show. And after that, after I've taken that course, the first thing that I did was I opened up um, an Indodax account. An Indodax is the Indonesian exchange for cryptocurrency, and I put in money into my um, account so that I can trade into cryptocurrency so that I can understand how to use that. So now, for example, in the scenario that Joy just presented, where if I were to say travel to a neighboring country, let's say anywhere at all, let's say in Sri Lanka, if I were to go there and if I wanted to use now my cryptocurrency, how would i do that it's not something that i can withdraw the um the money into um from an atm how would I, how would i be able to use that cryptocurrency if i were to travel sure so let's say you went to el salvador just because they made it as legal tender and so that means that you can actually pay for your accommodation or your food using using bitcoin and so if you wanted to you could actually just take the um, Bitcoin that's in your Indodax wallet and it, it would be on your phone, like on an application. And when you go to check out, it's like as simple as scanning a QR code and sending some money over. And so um, that way, basically, you know, you had Indodax as a centralized exchange where they basically custody your, your Bitcoin, same as your bank does with your rupiah. But there's also the option to have a, a self-custody wallet no third party has control over. And um, that would be kind of our part two of the, the workshop, the follow on. And so if you had your own self custody wallet too, it worked the same way. You would have an application on your phone, scan a QR code, send it over. Um, it's as simple as that. Um, it's very fast. Uh, it, it can be cheap if you utilize uh, the Lightning Network, wallets that support the Lightning Network for Bitcoin, which means that transactions are faster and much cheaper. Um, and so, yeah, that's how it would work. If you didn't want to spend your Bitcoin and do like a, a Bitcoin to Bitcoin transaction, you could find someone in El Salvador that would be willing to trade your Bitcoin. So you sell your Bitcoin to them for, let's say, I mean, they use the U.S. dollar there. So you'd get U.S. dollars um, and be able to pay with U.S. dollars. Kind of like going to a money changer. You know, you can actually obtain your first cryptocurrency by earning it. So you don't have to have starting cash. And you don't have to go through an exchange. So for example, let's say I wanted to pay you. And so I could send you cryptocurrency to your own um, direct self-custody wallet. The more decentralized peer-to-peer -peer transaction, we can just do together utilizing a wallet. And so then you could get your first cryptocurrency by earning it. So you don't even have to have starting capital. Oke, okay, sekarang lebih paham bahwa kalau kita mau memiliki cryptocurrency, bisa dimiliki dari salah satu atau dua cara yaitu dengan kita menerima cryptocurrency dan kita menyimpannya di e-wallet atau bisa kita membeli dari exchange seperti Indodax nah sekarang pertanyaan berikutnya kalau kita mau memiliki cryptocurrency sebagai salah satu aset kelas daripada portfolio investment kita seberapa banyakkah mesti kita miliki cryptocurrency ini 
I think it's important when you start to get into the world of investing to understand both the big picture of your different options. And then, you know, for example, if you have an interest in cryptocurrency, to understand what the relationship is to your wider investment strategy. You know, many people now are jumping into cryptocurrency, um, but we see some of the wealthiest investors out there and the most successful ones, um, you know, the ones that are institutional investors, family offices, the billionaires of the world, they're allocating anywhere from, you know, average of one to 10% of their net worth into cryptocurrency, which is actually quite, you know, a small minority portion of their investment portfolio. And so that's also like what we want, you know, we encourage people to get excited and jump into the cryptocurrency because it's an amazing opportunity, but also to make sure that they have that big picture perspective. And, and, and first do kind of a self-assessment of, of where they stand um, financially, you know, do they, do you know your net worth? Um, do you have an emergency fund? There's certain things to factor into. And we certainly, you know, we want people to get into investing sooner than later, but we want them to be in a, a position, uh, a good position to do that. And um, by the way, I just, my Indonesian friends told me about a, uh, an RCA, the Rupiah Cost Averaging uh, app, um, called Luno, so that Indonesians can sign up for and do dollar cost averaging. Um, so that's definitely something to check out because Indodax doesn't offer that. All right. Ladies, any final thoughts? I'd love to just give a shout out to an Indonesian female Bitcoin educator that I know, and she has a organization called Kalas Bitcoin. And so she teaches in Bahasa, Indonesia, and also sometimes brings in different guests to help too. And so I encourage any Indonesian speakers um, to check that out as well as a resource. Her name is? Her name is Dia and her website is kalasbitcoin.com, I think. Kalasbitcoin. All right. So more resources there out um, for you and I will include that all in the show notes. All right, ladies, it's been lovely. And thank you so much for everything. And we'll catch you in the next time.